Today is the 34th anniversary is it, of the Iranian Revolution. Yeah. It's an occasion that we should celebrate, commemorate and celebrate and follow its uh, great examples. And 34 years ago, probably I was in my 40s, and uh, when we heard the news that Shah has been overthrown and its place in Islamic revolution has taken place. It was a great joyous news to me and to millions of people all over the world, particularly Muslims. For centuries, Muslims have been living under the <coughs> under oppression from imperialists and colonialists where our resources have been exploited, our culture, our religion has been marginalized. And this is the first time in these hundreds of years when millions of people rose up without arms and overthrew a most cruel dictatorial regime which was receiving orders from their masters in Washington and London and other places. So it, everywhere in the world, Muslims rose up and welcomed this revolution. Imam Khomeini overnight became the leader of the Ummah. People were carrying his portraits, whether in Jakarta, in Malaysia, or in Iraq, or in any other part of the Muslim world. What impressed most people was Imam Khomeini's deep religiosity and his conviction that Allah will be on the side of justice and as a result not being afraid of the great powers at the time the United States and Russia which had uh, imposed which have imposed their own form of uh, values and rule over other parts of the world Therefore, when Imam Khomeini stood up and millions of Iranians followed him in overthrowing uh, the tyrant uh, Shah, who was, among others, one of the pillars of the imperial's domination of the area, this was greeted with great joy by all. Now, the enemies did not simply give up they did everything possible to undermine the revolution. First, they instigated Saddam Hussein in Iraq and the Arab leaders in the Gulf to join together and attack Iran so that the revolution can be pushed back and defeated and a puppet regime put up in Iran. I think for almost 10 years, the Iranian people fought, fought by themselves without any support from others, and finally triumphed. Now, so here they failed, the imperialists failed, and then they imposed the economic sanctions, and then they created all sorts of uh, terrorist groups to undermine the revolution. But in all this, they have failed. And so they have not given up. Under the most difficult conditions, Iran, despite the loss of millions of people, despite the loss of resources, despite losing 10 years of fighting this war, they managed to not only survive, but to develop and become strong and independent, as to pose <coughs> the most serious threat to domination by the West. And uh, the West is still trying every means to try to bring down the Iranian Islamic government. Now, having said all that, I think Iran faces not only challenges from its enemies who are trying to undermine it, but also faces greater challenges in trying to create an Islamic society. Iran has been successful in its political revolution. It has been successful in developing technology, 
armaments and other things to strengthen its community has been successful in developing agriculture and other basic things that are needed by the Iranian people. And above all, it has stood by the Palestinians in their struggle against Zionism without compromising in any way. Now, despite all that, I think Iran has a great challenge in front of it. As I said earlier on, to transform the political, the victory of the political revolution into creating a truly genuine Islamic society. This because although uh, Shah's regime was overthrown, although many of the institutions were destroyed, but then there was still, there was still a very strong presence of, of uh, people who had been influenced by Western knowledge, Western systems in, the, in Iran, in all the institutions of Iran, including universities, the judiciary, maybe not so much in the judiciary, in the universities, particularly in the, in the universities, and maybe even in the civil service and uh, in, uh, in the field of economics. So the challenge now is how do you create an Islamic economy where there will be justice for all, or economic product will be distributed justly among all the people of Iran, where there will be no big gap between the rich and the poor, where poverty will be wiped out, and where there will be equal opportunity for all. Now, this is a big challenge in the field of economics. Similarly, in the future, in the area of uh, knowledge, it is even a bigger challenge how to transform our educational institutions into institutions that are based on Islamic principles. I think here Iran has made some efforts. I think the current leader of Iran realizes the serious problems that uh, Iran and other Muslim nations face from, uh, from, the, from imperial domination in the fields of culture, knowledge uh, and education. And I think recently he has been, we welcome his recent call, for example, to look at the way social science is being taught in Iran and to uh, create uh, a syllabus that is rooted in Islamic values and traditions. So this is a very positive measure. And I hope uh, the Iranian government will uh, proceed with this examining all the institutions, all the policies that are being implemented to see that they comply with Islamic values. Winning a revolution is one thing, but very often revolutions are defeated by enemies within. Enemies who actually have absorbed the values of the, 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 our, our, our enemies outside and are trying to undermine and support these things. Therefore, it is very important that at the end of the day, the success of any revolution depends on the success uh, we achieve in trying to convert, convince the majority of the people to accept the values of the revolution. It's not just providing material things to the people. It is more importantly the ideas, the values. Uh, these are the things that must be accepted by the majority of the population. But there also is an important issue is that we need, the Iranian government must create space for differing views. So it's important how we deal with differing views. We have to differentiate between enemies who, want, who are against the revolution and friends who may disagree with us, disagree with the government, disagree with the political leaders. So it's, it has to be treated differently. We cannot treat everybody as enemies, everybody who disagrees with the government or the political leader as his enemy. So this is one thing that we have to develop over the years, how to deal with differences. I'm sure in military Islamic history, even during the time of the Prophet, there was a lot of difference between the Sahaba, even some people even disagreed with the Prophet, but there was a way of dealing with these things. So, 
So I'm quite hopeful that given the present leadership, there is a great hope in the Iranian revolution. But as I said, uh, there are efforts being taken to isolate Iran by playing up on sectarian differences. For example, the Shia Sunni issue is being played up. It's being played up.